Hey guys, how's it going? Brandon here from Dude Man Games. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about universal builds and aspect ratios and how to set all that up in Game Salad, or at least the way that I set it up in Game Salad. Um, so, when you first start setting up your game, you want to make sure you use iPad, uh, iPad and check resolution independence. And this main image that I have right here is kind of to show you about the aspect ratios. So I did some looking into aspect ratios, and there's a ton of them. I mean, there's so many devices, and they all have slightly different resolutions. Um, but I found that pretty much all the devices fall into five main aspect ratios. And Game Salad mainly seems to be set up to handle the three main ones. So you have uh, 16 by 9, which is this uh, main green one in the middle. And if you add these dark green bars, that's a 3-2, uh, so that's like the legacy devices. And if you add the lime green bars at the top and the bottom, that is a 4-3, which is the iPad. And over here, just as kind of a frame of reference of the other two sizes, you have a 16 by 10 over here and a 5-4. Uh, over here so if you look at this image in the way that it's laid out is kind of the same way that game salad handles it it they take your game and flatten it almost like a like a video it's just rendered out flat and then it crops off the top and the bottom equally and so if we look at this in a preview mode we look at iPad and then we check out now let's go to legacy iPhone, switch this to crop, and it just took the top bars off. And if we switch it to any of the other ones, uh, Nook Color, Kindle Fire, any of those, they, they'll take off the, the other bar. And so knowing that, if you're starting a new game, you can take that kind of into consideration. And so you can build with... Like if your guy is running on the ground or whatever, make your boundaries of your game within the 16 by 9. And then no matter what, that'll that'll never get cropped off. And then you can just add extra stuff for the extra space that's there for the other devices. So in my game, I use just extra foreground. So I had like the ground plane right here, and then I just added extra ground right here. And the same at the top, there was sky, and so I just made extra sky up there. So when you build it that way you don't have to really change much. The only thing you're really changing is if, say, you have an actor out here, and this is maybe your HUD, or this is something that is going to need to move to fit the different sizes. So when it's an iPad, it needs to be up here, and when it's on a, a Legacy, it needs to be there, and when it's on a 16.9, it needs to be here. So the whole thing can be controlled really easy. And I mean, you just make a game level attribute called device type and I use an index. You're only going to have three different types. So it's, it could be index or integer. Um, I use an index. And so there's only two actors that really control the whole thing. So the device checker you use at the, on your very first scene, and then it'll check, you know, for the width, and height of the device that you're using and then put it to one of the three different types. All right, and so I have the other devices already set up here, but we'll go ahead and just set this one up. So uh, they're all they're all pretty much set up the same way. So we're going to go when attribute device screen size height and I use height because I'm using a landscape. If you were doing a portrait, you would use the width. Um, when that equals, so this is an iPad, so it's going to be 768. So when that equals 768, we're going to change attribute, game, device type to 3. And so I have mine set up to where 16 by 9 is 1. I want to start off at 16 by 9. That way, most of the devices are starting to be more, they're, they're all widescreen, so they're all going to be closer to the 16 by 9. Um, so I, I started off at one, which is the 16 by nine, and then two will be the legacy or, um, the three, two. 
and three will be the iPad or the four three. So get that. And the other thing that we need to uh, to do is the back button or whatever button that is going to move whenever something changes, whenever the device type changes. So the first thing I usually do in almost any actor in pretty much every situation is I create a real attribute, self attribute, and I call it start X or start Y. And in this case, we're moving up and down, so I'll make it start Y. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is change self position Y, or actually change self start Y to self position Y. And then we'll make our rule. And we're gonna say when game device type equals one. So when it equals a 16 by nine, which is where we're gonna start, then we wanna change, we're gonna change it to uh, start Y. So it's position needs to move to start Y. So we're gonna change self position Y to self start Y. So that way we can move this actor anywhere we want and wherever it starts from, it'll automatically start from there and make, make everything happen from there. All right, so we need two more of these, one for two and one for three. So when the device type equals two, so when it's a, uh, when it's a legacy, we wanna change its position Y to its position Y. We're gonna change it to the starting point, but we also wanna add to it and so I've already kind of figured out what the numbers are. Um, if you add 45 to its position, it'll move up to the right position for Legacy. And for this one, for iPad, um, it's going to be 88. So we'll add 88. Okay. And so now we can put this on on the put this device checker out here. And give this thing a test. So we're on iPad, and you can see it already snapped to the right position. So if we switch to Legacy iPhone, switch this to Crop, and you'll see it snapped to the right position. And now if we go to, um, let's do. All right, so um, we've got that thing set up here. Now I, I have this uh, button, and you can set up a button for yours too. So let's say that they have a device that doesn't match the resolution of any of the devices listed here in this device checker. So theirs doesn't match any of those. It's some odd resolution, but it's still a 16 by 9. They can, it'll, you can set it to switch it in the options, but the thing is, is that you can't have the device checker on the same scene because this is constantly checking your device size and changing it. And so it for the example in this demo, I can't have both of these on the same scene, or it won't. The button won't work. So let's bring the button out here. And basically, how I set the whole button up is just the images change based on the device type. So if device type is one, then it's that cup, that image, and then when you touch it and you release it, <coughs> pardon me, it changes the device type plus one. And when it gets to four, it just resets back to one. So, let's go in there. You can, since it's an iPad, you can kind of see what's happening better. You can see how it just snaps to goes to the right position. So if you have a button like this, put it in your options screen, and then that way, you know, if if theirs doesn't register and maybe it's a 3-2, they can come in here and switch it to the closest one for their device. Um, now the other thing I wanted to show you was kind of how I use this in my game. And so this, this way you can kind of see what, I was, what I'm talking about. So we're set to iPad and if we go to options in here, you can see that I just put these bars up here and then that way when it's on 16.9 I don't have to waste any memory display and stuff that's not going to be visible and then when it's on 3.2 they just shrink and you can you can control a lot of different stuff with this same same method and it's the same thing when you go into the levels and 
I have all of these different things and they all have that same rule in it that they just move up you know a 45 and 88 so if we switch this to nook color switch it to crop and reset it and go back in here Let's go back in here all those things they're all in the right place so that's how you can set the whole thing up um, so anyways, yeah, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, in the next video, I'm going to uh, kind of show how you can make like a emitter that you can have really high degree of control over it so that you can like s control what stuff comes out at exactly what time and you can control it, I mean, really, really high end so that this stuff will all come out specifically exactly when you want and it's it's pretty cool the way it's set up it's all through a table so all those things are all coming out whenever their number comes up all right thanks for watching